Well lads, what's the crack and welcome back to another new video here in KDFG and they're there back with more Premier League predictions as they're predicting the matches for match week 18 now the final match week until before Christmas and I'll tell you what here some teams really getting into a bit of ruts now other teams of course are trying to continue to build up some more points as the games do go on so I'll tell you what here it's definitely going to be a big match week for many teams obviously Man City v Brentford has been put up, uh, postponed due to Man City meaning that the Club World Cup but we're also going to give you the predictions today of the Club World Cup final between Man City and Fluminense so before we do we too much more time here in the centro make sure you are subscribed many of you watch my watching my videos are still not subscribed so if you are a new viewer and you like my content make sure you are subscribed make sure you like the video as well it really does help and support the channel make sure you click the bell as well so you're notified when they upload new videos so enjoy today's predictions for the club world cup final and premier league match week 18 Kick started the match week off this week on Thursday night as we have the most pointless derby in football across the world as we have Crystal Palace hosting Brighton. Now lads, it says every year, why is this a derby like? It's no point at all in it being a derby like, but I mean, anyway, apparently the two teams are rivals anyway, so it's going to be interesting to see what does go down here. Obviously the smart money should be on the Zerbys Brighton because of course they are on paper by far the better side. However, Crystal Palace are picking up some points against the bigger sides. I mean, a 2-1 the feature now to win the feet at home to Liverpool. That was followed up by a massive two all draw away at Man City. They've come from 2 0 down as well. So, what a massive point that was there for Crystal Palace. They're performing well against the bigger sides, and it'll be interesting to see can they live up to the occasion here. I uh, think Brighton, of course, were dominated losing 2 0 away to Arsenal and an embarrassing defeat there. I got the prediction right, so we're finally back to getting predictions right, which is good to see there. But I mean, Brighton, of course, they're going to want to look at um, redeeming themselves after an embarrassing defeat away at the Emirates last time out. But of course, Shalhurst Park is never an easy venue to go to. So, so without wasting too much more time here, that here's what I think is going to, but here's what I think is going to go down here between Crystal Palace and Brighton. At half time, I'm going to say it is goalless. However, in the first ten minutes of the second half, I'm going to say that Crystal Palace will take the lead. I'm going to say John Philippe Mateta, who has scored in the past two games for Palace against Liverpool and Man City. I'm going to say he'll score again in this one, making the three from three and giving Palace a one 0 lead here against their better rivals, uh, Brighton. Then I'm going to say for the rest of the game, really, Palace are just defending. Brighton continue to bombard them with attack after attack after attack. And with 10 minutes to go, then I'm going to say Danny Welbeck coming off the bench will get to play. You know, a good cross from someone like Adingra or Matoma. And I'm going to say that Welbeck will equalise, making it 1 1. And despite Brighton's efforts in trying to get a winner, it's not going to happen. So Crystal Palace won, Brighton won. That's what I've gone with here in this one here. I think in the end here, Brighton will struggle a wee bit. However, they will be okay and we'll get a decent enough point here away at Sandhurst Park. <clears throat> Next match then, we go to Friday Night Football as Aston Villa are hosting Sheffield United in a Midlands derby, I guess you could say. Now, an interesting one here, once again, Aston Villa last time out, scraped the 2-1 victory away at Brentford, continuing their, um, cont continuing their very good form in the league. So that was definitely very important there for uh, Unai Emery side to get another win there in that one, where Sheffield fell to a terrible 2-0 defeat away at Chelsea last time out. They're going to like to bounce back here, but are they going to bounce back here, lads? Absolutely not. Aston Villa are going to the blades to shreds in this one. The blades will barely have a sniff. Like they're gonna have two or three shots in this one compared to the Villa's twenty plus shots. And in the end here, lads, I'm gonna say it's a comfortable three 0 victory here for Aston Villa on Friday night. I want to say at half time it's two 0 to Aston Villa. Ollie Watkins will score the first goal after fifteen minutes. He'll make a one 0 in this one. He's gonna have another very very good game in this one. Right in the stroke of half time, I'm gonna say a corner's whipped in and uprises the Brazilian centre back Diego Carlos to finally get his first goal of the season. Make a 2-0 in this one and will be 2-0 then going into half time then I'm going to say about 3 quarters of the game gone with a quarter of the game left I'm going to say that Leon Bailey will come on and he will score making a 3-0 capping off what is going to be one of the most comfortable victories Aston Villa will have this season so Aston Villa 3 Sheffield United 0 that's what I've gone with here in this one uh, really Sheffield will be light work for Villa and Unai Emery's men are going to get yet another victory putting them so getting themselves another 3 points just before Christmas so Aston Villa 3 Sheffield nil as we've gone with here then in this one 
Last match then, uh, we go on the Saturday and the early kickoff says us go to London as West Ham United are hosting Man United and an interesting one this one definitely. Um, as of recording, of course, it's Wednesday, but the Liverpool v West Ham Carabao Cup quarter final has not happened yet. It'll be interesting to see could the Hammers go to Anfield and maybe get something from get something from there. Definitely would hope so. United got something at Anfield over the weekend and nil nil draw away at Anfield against Liverpool. A very very um good result there last time out for United. West Ham's last result, of course, and the Premier League was a comfortable 3 0 victory at home to Wolves last time. So, I mean, London Stadium is an interesting one for Man United because, I mean, half the time we'll win there, half the time we'll lose there, and we'll lose terribly as well. And yeah, I'm, I'm unsure in this one, lads. I'm unsure. I think can't see us winning, though. I cannot see us winning this one. However, in the end, I'm going to say we'll hold out fair points. So, I'm going to say here finishes West Ham 1, Man United 1 in this one. I'm going to say at half time, West Ham will be the dominant side, and with half an hour gone, I'm going to say, look. Lucas Paqueta will get the Hammers a 1-0 lead in this one. And at half time then the Hammers will be cruising to a big victory here at home to Ten Hags Reds. Then in the second half I'm going to say United will come into the game a wee bit more. But West Ham will continue to sort of bully United I guess you could say. Then I'm going to say with less than 5 minutes left very late on I'm going to say Anthony. Yes Anthony a player who's starting to look a lot better for United over the past couple of games. I'm going to say he'll equalise in this one. Making it 1-1. Finally, finally ending his goal drought and getting himself a goal making it 1-1 in this one and saving United get another point here before Christmas so West Ham won United won that's what I've gone with here in this one I'm going to say two draws in the row for United it will be the results and in the end here lads I'm going to say a draw will be the best result we could get because West Ham will be very unlucky not to win this one here at home to Ten Hags United Next match then, sees us going to Craven Cottage as Fulham are hosting Burnley. Now Burnley, I believe, have a very, very good record against Fulham. And Fulham, of course, were playing midweek in a car by Cup of Wet Everton. A one-all draw that was there. However, Fulham ended up winning 7-6 from penalties in the end. They're through to the car by Cup semi-finals. So uh, prop, props to the Cottagers. They fair play to them for making them to the semi-finals there. Look at here. It's going to be interesting to see what goes on here. Will Burnley take advantage of um of Fulham maybe being a bit, um, what guys you could Set fatigued from midweek. I'm not sure. I mean, Fulham last time in the Premier League, of course, lost 3 0 away at Newcastle pretty poorly, whereas Burnley lost poorly enough 2 0 at home to Everton as well. So, look at here, it's going to be interesting to see what does go on here. It's going to be a boring enough match. Nothing really will be created, nothing really notable will happen. However, I would still expect Fulham to win this one. So, I'm going to say here it finishes Fulham 1, Burnley 0 in this one. I'm going to say the only goal of the game will come in around the 20 or 30 minute mark in the first half. It's going to be a wonderful strike from Harry Wilson. In. It's going to be unstoppable from for James Trafford and Fulham will be make it one 0 down in the first half and that's really going to be all that happens in this match. So Fulham one, Burnley nil. That's what we've gone with here in this one. I don't really believe Burnley will challenge Fulham too much and in a boring match, Fulham will still manage to get another three points for themselves as they continue to build back to build back their good form again. Next match then, we go to Kenilworth Road as Luton Town are hosting Newcastle United. Now Newcastle went out of the Carabao Cup midweek, 1-1 draw away at Chelsea. They could not hold on to that uh, lead and of course Chelsea equalised in injury time. And then Chelsea went on to win 4-2 on penalties there in the end. So I mean Newcastle, they definitely could be fatigued from that and they're continuing their bad form. Like I mean, Newcastle are not in good form at all. Like the last time they won an away match in the Premier League was back when they beat Sheffield United 8-0. That's pretty shocking, like, I mean, and I mean, like, here, another away game at Kenilworth Road, like, not only is the Kenilworth Road a tricky place to go to, but Luton, of course, last time out, their 1-1 draw away at Bournemouth had to be abandoned due to Tom Lockyer, the team captain, uh, having a heart attack on the pitch, and my prayers go out to Tom Lockyer, that's a terrible thing to happen on the football pitch, so, I think as well as that, like, the Hatters are going to be extra motivated here to get the win for Tom Lockyer in this one, and will they get the win, though? I don't think they will get the win, Luton, however, They'll fight valiantly, they definitely will. In the end here, I'm going to say Luton will be the better side. However, Newcastle will still be able to hold out for a 1-1 draw here at Kenilworth Road. I'm going to say half-time is goalless, and for most of the game, it's going to be goalless, however. I'm going to say after 20 minutes, with Newcastle struggling, they'll manage to find a bit of space, and Sean Longstaff, from a tricky enough angle, will manage to scuff it in the back of the net, making it 1-0 to the Magpies here. And surely Eddie Howe's men will have sealed all three points here in a tricky trip to Luton. However, I'm going to say then, in injury time, Andros Townsend will come back to haunt his former side with a beautiful strike into the bottom corner. He'll make a 1-1 in this one, saving a late enough point for the Hatters, getting them a massive point against 
Newcastle in this one. So Luton won, Newcastle won. That's what I've gone with here in this one. I'm going to say here in the end, Newcastle will be lacklustre. They won't defend too great. And in the end here, Luton will get a very well-deserved three point. Uh, they'll get a very well-deserved point from this one. They'll gain a point for Tom Lockyer. Whereas Newcastle will lose two points here in a terrible draw away at Kenilworth Road. So Luton won, Newcastle won. That's what I've gone with here then in this one. Next match then, so the is going to City Ground as Nottingham Forest are hosting Bournemouth now this is going to be a very very interesting game and a very very good game of that as well not only are Bournemouth continuing to be high flying you know of course they didn't get to finish their match against Luton last time out but they're continuing to high flying under Andoni Areola whereas Nottingham Forest like of course their last game a 2-0 defeat at home to Tottenham another good prediction there for me another great prediction there for me last week so I was on a roll there last week and I'm very very happy to see that hoping for the same this week but I mean the big news coming out of Forest this week was Steve Cooper has been sacked the yeah, Steve Cooper after doing such an amazing job for the time was finally called on his time at Nottingham Forest and in the end here lads he was sacked and well they've replaced him with Nuno Espirito Santo this is going to be a massive match here for Nuno in his first match at home to Bournemouth I definitely do think there'll be a manager bouncer it's going to be an amazing match at the city ground Nottingham Forest still Thursday and dying for another win because I haven't won and I don't think a very very long time so I'm going to say here the new manager bounce will help them a lot and I'm going to say the full time score here is Nottingham Forest 3 Bournemouth 2 at half time I'm going to say it is 1-1 one, on one this one I'm going to say after about 10 or 15 minutes Nuno start to uh, life at Nottingham Forest will not get off to the best of starts as Marcus Tavernier will open the score and he will score yet another goal for the Cherries making it 1-0 early on here at the city ground then I'm going to say at half time with four sort of being in the dumps Bournemouth looking the better side a corner's whipped in and up steps Cheku Kuyate the bullet header and then past Neto making it 1-1 one, one then and bringing Nottingham Forest into half time with a bit of hope and momentum on their side. Then I'm going to say in the second half, I'm going to say then that Forrest will take the 2-1 lead. Another corner is whipped in and up steps Oral Mangala this time to head it in past Neto. You're going to 2-1 the Forrest in this one with the 10 minutes gone in the second half. And then I'm going to say here, lads, that Forrest will finally have the lead. However, going to have to hold it out against the tricky cherry side. Then I'm going to say with about a quarter of the game left, Philip Billing will equalise once again, making a two-all in this one and getting the Cherries back into the game. However, with 10 minutes to go, another corner is whipped in and for the third header, big Chris Wood is going to step up. He'll make a 3-2 to Forrest with a three-header scored for Forrest in this one as Forrest will get a massive three points to finally getting yet another win for themselves in their relegation fight as Nuno's life at Forrest will start off pretty good. So, not even Forrest 3, Bournemouth 2. It's going to be a very, very good game here. And then that plenty of goals plenty of brilliant chances for both sides but in the end here lads I'm going to say the new manager bounce will help four side a lot and that will just about help for us get over the line in the end in this one and get them all three points here just before Christmas so Nottingham Forest 3 Bournemouth 2 definitely the perfect Christmas present for all Nottingham Forest fans finally seeing their team winning right before Christmas next match then we go to the Tottenham as Tottenham are hosting Everton and a big game here this one here obviously Everton of course going to have to pick themselves up after um, a poor poor penalty defeat they're against Fulham I mean I won't dive on it too long or like, but I mean Amadou Nana had the worst penalty I've ever seen in my life like that was a terrible penalty and that would have put them through as well if he scored it I don't know what he was thinking there but I mean the Belgians gonna to have to pick himself back up and go again in this one. Look at you know, I think that I think that penalty shoot against uh Fulham is really gonna put Everton into the dumps and they've been in amazing form as of recently. However, I think that penalty shoot is gonna put them in the bit of bad form again. I'm gonna say in the end here, Tottenham will be the better side, and Andrew's men will be able to graft out a two one victory here at home to the Toffees. I'm gonna to say at half time it's one nil to Everton, right before half time with Tottenham, or no one it's gonna be one nil to Tottenham, sorry, at half time. One nil Tottenham at half time time they'll be knocking on the door all half but right before half time right in the stroke as Everton are hopeful after going to go into the break at goalless I'm going to say Pedro Porro will have a beautiful strike into the top corner on the volley and I'm going to say then he will make a 1-0 then to Tottenham going into half time with an amazing strike putting on just men 1-0 up then going into half time then I'm going to say in the hour mark with half an hour to go Richardson will head home from a beautiful cross from Hungman Son making a 2-0 then in this one with half an hour to go then Richardson will come back to haunt his former side Everton and he'll make a 2-0 then as Tottenham will most likely be holding out for the win then I'm going to say with five minutes left James Garner will get in the end of a, a, a scrappy uh, 
for corner clearance from Tottenham. Poor enough clearance. It'll be scrappy, but James Garner will scuff it in. Pass Vicario making a 2 1, giving the Toffees a bit of hope, however. It's not going to last too long here. Tottenham will hold out and we'll get a well deserved three points here at home to the Toffees. So Tottenham 2, Everton 1. That's what I've gone with here in this one. I do believe in the end Tottenham should be okay and we'll definitely graft out all three points here at home to the Toffees. Next match then, this is the big match of the week by far, as Liverpool are hosting Arsenal. What a match this is going to be here. Massive match like, but either side win. It's very, very hard to call. Last time out, these two sides met. It was uh, last season, finished 2 all at Anfield. What a game that was there, definitely. And in the end, that, that was one of the games which ended up bottling Arsenal the league title in the end. So, Arsenal are going to look to maybe um, learn from their mistakes from the last time and go again and get a win this time out. It's going to be a very, very good game here because obviously Liverpool as well, you know, they're playing midweek and that could possibly fatigue their side a lot as well. Arsenal could be a lot more well rested. You have to take that into account. Like, however, it's going to be interesting to see. It's really, really hard to call, in my opinion. But I've narrowed it down to one result in the end, and I'm not going to tell you that yet. I'm going to make his wait. Here's what I think is going to go down here at Anfield between Liverpool and Arsenal, and what is going to be arguably, possibly, as a potential to be one of the games of the season. At half time, then I'm going to say it is Liverpool 2. Arsenal won. Yes, I'm going to say it's going to be a very, very entertaining first half. And after 20 minutes, it will be Arsenal to take the lead. Martin Odegaard will get in the end of a good ball, a three ball in by Bukayo Saka, making it 1 0 then in this one. I think Arsenal will dominate the first 20 minutes of the match. They'll have their well deserved 1 0 lead here um, after 20 minutes. Then I'm going to say 10 or 15 minutes on from that, Trent Alexander Arnold will get in the end of a good ball in by Luis Diaz. He'll hit it first time, bang into the bottom corner. 1 1. Anfield will be bouncing finally once again, and it'll be 1 1 in this one here as uh, Liverpool both finally have themselves back into the game. Right before half time, then I'm going to say Arsenal are trying to hold out to make it 1 1, leave it 1 1 going into the break. However, it's not going to happen. Luis Diaz, I'm going to say, will get in the end of a good header, a good cross, a decent enough cross from Mohamed Salah. He'll head it in past David Raya, making a 2 1 to Liverpool in this one. That's how it's going to be then going into half time. What's going to be an amazing half of football at Anfield. Then I'm going to send the second half. Liverpool will try go defensive, ironically, after hitting out about United, uh, going defensive. Like it's, it'll be a bit of a bad. Like, uh, but they'll mainly be defensive in my opinion they're trying to hold out for the win however I'm going to say in the end with about 10 or 15 minutes left in the match uh, despite all their brilliant efforts of brilliant defending I'm going to say lapse of um, judgement at the back then will lead to Arsenal going in the 2v1 Saka will have the ball he'll squirt the Gabriel Jesus he'll make a 2-2 in this one and that's how I think it's going to go finish here between uh, Liverpool and Arsenal at Anfield so Liverpool 2 Arsenal 2 that's what I've gone with here in this one in the end I'm going to say that Liverpool will battle it in the end here. I think Arsenal will be very, very lucky. A lapse of judgment will happen at the back line. And in the end here, lads, I'm going to say that Arsenal will manage to get, go away from Anfield with a point and a massive point at that as Liverpool will go back to back games at home in the Premier League in two big games against United and Arsenal. Only having two points from a possible six. So Liverpool two, Arsenal two. That's what I've gone with here then in this one. Final Premier League match of the week then says go to Christmas Eve under the Molyneux Stadium as Wolves are hosting Chelsea. An interesting one this one here, lads. I mean, Molyneux Stadium is a bogey stadium for Chelsea. I believe over the past like 10, 15 years, Chelsea have only ever won here twice. I've had a terrible record anyway at the Molyneux and I'll tell you what here, I don't think they're going to win this one. I think although they fought valiantly and were the better side overall against Newcastle in the Carabao Cup quarterfinals, Chelsea will do what Chelsea do and after the two or three good performances in a row, they'll go back to their terrible performances. They're not going to win this one here lads but I think they can do enough to get a point. I'm going to say in the end here it finishes, Wolves won, Chelsea won in this one. I'm going to say the first half is all Chelsea, Wolves will struggle really in the first half and with about five minutes left to go I'm going to say Axel de Sassi will head in from a corner making it 1-0 and giving Chelsea the lead here on Christmas Eve going into half time then in the second half I'm going to say Chelsea will not come out at all it'll be very very poor and 10 or 15 minutes gone in the second half I'm going to say that Hwang Hee Chan will once again find himself on the score sheet making it 1-1 in this one and in the end here lads Chelsea will just have to defend with their lives it's going to be all Wolves the last half hour 
and then and in the end though I'm gonna say the Potch's men will hold out a couple of good blocks from the likes of Tiago Silva, De Sassi and Badi Shield maybe, even Levi Caldwell and a couple of good saves as well from young Petrovic and that's as well. So I think in the end here Chelsea will struggle a lot in the second half, however, they still will be able to do enough to hold out for a massive enough points on Christmas Eve about Wolves. So Wolves won, Chelsea won. That's what I've gone with here then in this one. I don't think Chelsea are going to win here at all at their bogey stadium as Wolves will once again get one over Chelsea at the Molyneux. Now we go on to the Club World Cup final as Manchester City, after defeating Urawa at Red Diamonds 3-0, will take on Fluminense, who just beat uh, Alali of Egypt 2-1 in their semi-final. Interesting on this one here, of course, Fluminense are not a team to be um, underestimated. They're a very, very good side. They've got Marcelo playing for them, actually. So it'll be interesting to see how Marcelo does get on here, even though he is pretty old. But look at here, lads. I mean, I know I said you shouldn't underestimate Fluminense, but it's going to be a Man City win here anyway. I'm going to say in the end here, finishes Man City 2, Fluminense 1 in this one. I'm going to say in the end, overall, City will be the dominant side. It'll be goalless at the break, however. But in the first five minutes of the second half, I'm going to say Julian Alvarez will get in the score sheet, making it 1-0 down to the citizens in this one. Then I'm going to say the second goal of the game will go to Man City's way. Once again, they'll double the lead with 20 minutes to go through. Jack Grealish think this time will score. And then in the end here, City will just try hold out for the win. I'm going to say in the last minute of the injury time, though, Fluminense do get um, a consolation goal through their Brazilian John Kennedy. I watched the Copa, their Copa Libertadores final win, which went to extra time against Boca Juniors. And he scored, John Kennedy, he scored one of the best final goals ever in extra time, which ended up winning Fluminense the Copa Libertadores. Then he got sent off for running into the crowd and celebration afterwards. But I mean, I watched that match. He looked very, very good, John Kennedy. He looked a very, very good player. He scored in their last game against Alali. I'm going to say he scores again here in this one. However, in the end, it won't mean too much. And unfortunately, I will mean Manchester City will be champions of the world. So Man City 2, Fluminense 1. That's what I've gone with here in this one. I think Man City in the end should win the Club World Cup uh, pretty easily here. And Fluminense, I don't think, will really cause too much of a trouble. That will end today's um, Premier League predictions and Club World Cup final prediction, everybody. I hope you enjoy it. Remember to like, share and subscribe and turn on notifications. Thank you all for supporting the channel once again. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all once again in KTFG very, very soon.